What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 4 of our social let's play here in Football Manager 2018 and well let me tell you now, this group of kids we've got, they're pretty blooming good, they have been superb for us as of late, I am pleasantly surprised, um, obviously last episode we won against Oxair, since then... I mean, clean sheets aren't a thing that we need to worry about, apparently, because we're just going to score a load. We have hit some form, and well, today we are going to be taking on Nîmes, and uh, they're in 11th, but they are unbeaten in a while as well. So this could be a, an interesting game, you know, two informed teams meeting. Of course, this quickly blitzed through the game since you were last here. The first game we had was against Paris FC. Panna picked up man of the match, and well, Panna... He won player of the month with three goals in three games, and two of them that you're going to see in this quick kind of catch-up absolute screamers but yes a good 2-0 win here uh you know it was good to see Panna get a goal Adriat Sima getting a goal as well and uh well Adriat Sima he's been a little bit unhappy as of late we'll talk more about that later anyway the next game we had was against Tour and uh we won 2-1 in this game a comeback from behind again Panna you know he he got the first goal for us he set the tone he got man of the match in this game and Thomas Robinet with another goal for us unfortunately Robinet has picked up an injury he's still coming back from it at the moment but well, he's kind of forced his way into being first choice striker, which was a little bit of a surprise, but he's been finding goals like this one. And while with 10 minutes left to get that goal, Tor were unable to fight back. The next game we had was against Niot. And, uh, well, as you can see here, a 4-1 win. Actas this time with the Man of the Match award. A uh, plethora of goal scorers. A goal after 20 seconds as well. Yes, Robin A once more with it. They did get an equaliser. And, uh, well, going into half-time, I was a little bit worried. But Panna... I mean, he picked out another great goal. He got his third goal in three games, which is ridiculous for a centre mid. Obviously, playing on that Mazala role, getting further forward. And, uh, well, in the second half, we got two goals to make sure of it. Florian Martin and Actas with the goals. And, uh, yeah, just a very good performance indeed. Obviously, 4-1, quite emphatic by our standards. The next game we had was against US Orléans. And, uh, well, it finished 3-3. And uh, we bottled it. The, there's no other way of putting it, we bottled it. If this was a live com, like, I, I would have cried. Um, we were 3-0 up. We, we were going strong. You know, you're going into half-time, you're thinking, ah, oh, we're good now. No. We collapsed. We conceded three in the second half, and it was an 88th-minute goal um, that saw them get the crucial goal to, well, pull things back and... Yeah, I mean, not ideal. Not ideal. Only the the only real kind of downside of this whole run of games was this result. But yeah, free free, completely bottled. No other way of putting it. But we live, we learn, and well, hopefully we can improve off that. And well, I want to say we improved off that. But as you can see here in the French Cup, we were coming up against this team. I'm going to call them ASF for my own sanity. They are a low down non-league side, and we scraped a three two win. Not only overly convinced, but, um, well, we played a lot of the younger players. Uh, I won't show you the highlights of this game just because, obviously, it's a cup game. We expected to win. We would expect ourselves to win by more. But looking at the lineup here, you can see, indicated by the little yellow squares, a lot of young players playing. And that has been a common trend. So if we do just quickly flick over to the squad screen. I mentioned about the kids being all right. This is the team that I've been playing in a lot of our games. You can see, obviously, Prevo in goal has been doing very well indeed. He has improved. You can see the 20-year-old well-suited to League 2 football. Um, the scouts are telling me that he could be good enough to play in League 1. Uh, a few of you guys in the comments who have been doing social saves yourself have told me he's very good, so I'm very keen to see him continue to develop in goal. Uh, Right-back Fuchs has done fantastically. Um, obviously, we are training him, if we just look here, to play deep-line playmaker, but this year, he's been filling in at right-back for us, and I'll be honest... He's a pretty good fullback. You can see a 6.88 average rating, not superb, but, well, defensively, it's actually been a bit of a concern. The average ratings across our defenders has just been very poor. If we just look here, I'll just highlight the defenders. Um, for the most part, I mean, no, no one's got above a 7 except Adolf, but he's only played two games, and he's a player who we're not really playing that much because I want to give the younger players a chance. So, I mean, the younger players, they're doing okay for us. I feel like defensively, we've not been standout so far. But Fuchs has done well. Uh, Senhaj has come into the team. He made his first team debut. The Algerian, a player who is homegrown at the club, played for us back many years ago when we got relegated from League 1. Uh, and, uh, well, for, good for another young prospect to come through the team and start making appearances. He's made two first team appearances so far. Jean-Ruiz 
has been a very good player, came into the club and saw he was a centre mid, identified him as a centre back talent, it's where we've been playing him, it's where we've been training him, so far a 6.98 average rating for him is superb, Pendant at left back, I mean you can see here he is improving a hell of a lot, this guy I didn't really think he'd be in the first team, to be honest. He was playing in our reserves. We came in. We've given him a chance. You can see his determination has gone up through the roof. Um, he is currently being tutored. If we just look here, you can see he's been tutored by Jibo, who does have 15 determination. So hopefully, Pendant can also get his determination to 15. But yeah, good development by this guy. He's been playing okay when we've been kind of featuring him. Really can't complain one little bit. Quintongo been doing okay obviously came in from Morton still finding his feet a little bit I mean his value is 625,000 pounds for a player we played less than half of that for is very good I think Axel Aktas to be honest has still been the standout player he is continuing to improve scarily good he's featured in just about every game so far this season seven assists four goals a 7.42 average rating and he's only just turned 18 terrifying this guy I think is the player we might have to build around in the final third Trinkhausen well and well in the striker department I talked about the fact we've had a little bit of discontent Adriat Sima you might notice he is listed he wants to leave the club he says I'm not playing enough first team football I mean we've given him six games granted he scored four goals that is a little bit deceiving because he did get a hat trick so I and mean, we make of that what you will he got you know three of those four goals in one game but he's been talking about wanting to move on at 33 years old I'm not going to renew his contract at the end of the year he doesn't really fit in with our philosophy and as a result of him wanting to leave I kind of want to rotate the team you know not play him so much on the bench, obviously, you can see uh, for today's game, there's a lot of the first-team players, former first-team players, I feel like, at this point. Despite the fact that we are playing well, it's been these youngsters which have been the driving force behind that. I mean, you look at the league table here. Um, we are currently in second. Now, Avra are on equal footing with us. They have got a better goal difference. I still don't think we're going to be able to hold on to this position. You can see Brest down in sixth. They are only four points off us, so we've got to be mindful of them. And when I mentioned Neem, who we play today, if we just look at their schedule, you can see that they have been playing pretty well as of late. They're unbeaten in their last five. They had a horrific start to the season, it has to be said. But they've bounced back, and they are a team on the up, and, well, we need to play well today. In terms of other bits of news, there is a player in our reserves who is causing me a bit of a headache, and I want to know what you'd do, and it's this guy, Brian Lasmi. And, well, when you look at him, uh, he's just had his birthday, he's just turned 19, but he looks like a really good striker. Now, the issue I've got here is that our strikers are already kicking up a fuss about lack of first football. Adriat Seema's not been happy. Tuzgar, again, he, he's been complaining. He's actually asked if he can go out on loan, which is a little bit odd. But I've told him, yeah, you can go out on loan um, if someone comes in for him. Honestly, I'd probably like to keep him in the first team. But if we just compare him to Lazmi, I mean, yes, Tuzgar is a better player in a lot of areas. But given the young focus on our side and given how much Lazmi has improved... There is a real temptation just to promote him into the first team and give him some football and see what he can do. He has been a, a big standout performer. And Lacroix as well, another player who's improved a lot at centre-back at 17 years old. Another player who's not necessarily quite ready for the first team yet, but he's certainly thrown himself into contention. Uh, and, well, the more I think about this idea of just pursuing this younger team, which we have been sticking with for a lot of games, the more... Um, I guess the seed in my mind of perhaps promoting these reserve teams, uh, reserve team players continues to grow. You know, maybe it is worth bringing them into the team. So anyway, going into today's game against Nim, this is the lineup we're going to go with. We're going to go with the youngsters. You can see relationships are starting to form. Quintongo and Fuchs are getting on well. Pendant and Trincao on the left are doing well too. I think in centre back we are going to play Senhaj uh, or Haj Senhaji. Uh, answers on a postcard, but the Algerian at 20 years old, he's not you know a standout player necessarily but he's been putting in some good performances when we've given him a chance and well my assistant wants me to demote him I'm ignoring my assistant I have my own philosophy here I want to stick with these younger players I want to give them a chance Fuchs is going to take the captain's armband and well you look at across this entire team Adriat Sima and Panna are the only players above the age of 21 that is such a young core to our side and I'm hoping that they can do well here. Let's go out there and impress me. Neem, as I mentioned, they are a team in form. We need to be wary of them. They are not going to be pushovers by any means. But, well, with Adriat Seema spearheading our attack and a, well, an exciting young trio in Actas, Quintongo 
and the left midfielder whose name has already escaped my mind. Well, we should just call him that. That should be his name. Of course, it's Trincao who I'm thinking of. But, um, well, let's see what we can do here. We've been in good form. I mean, inevitably, as you guys will know in Football Manager, you go on good form, you kind of have to ride your form because Football Manager is such a momentum-based game. You know, you get a few wins, heads get up, players are happy, everything goes your way. As soon as it starts going against you, that's where the troubles begin. And um, whilst I'm really happy with the run that we're currently on, obviously we are... I, well, I've got that lingering doubt in the back of my mind about the fact that we are considered a mid-table team we're playing a lot of our younger players, and momentum is currently with us. And it's going to be the real test is going to come when we lose a few games in a row. And I'm hoping that for as long as we can, we can keep going. As Panna, I mean, he's a goal scoring machine from centre mid, the Angolan. He got three goals in the, well, three games last month. Jean Ruiz with the assist, the centre back, I mean, not exactly the greatest assist in the world. Panna just found himself in acres of space. Interesting defending of the set piece by Nim. Quintongo pulls it back. Nice little intelligent ball. Ruiz, first time. Panna tucks it away. Lovely little finish into that bottom corner. And, uh, well, Nim, they do not know what has hit them here so far. And hopefully, we can build off that going forward. You know, we want to keep this momentum going. The young players, at least so far in this game, with 10 minutes gone, doing well. Although, let's not get too carried away. We have bossed possession with 64%. But in reality, there's not been that many chances either way. As Well, a tackle goes flying in, but it actually benefits Nemes. They're on the attack here. Let's make sure we defend here. Ball whipped in to the back post. No one picking up the guy who has an absolutely incredible name. I'm not even going to dare to try and pronounce and well in the end the shot does go wide from him it was an okay opportunity you might expect them to do a little bit better and well their goalkeeper's injured I mean part of me is kind of tempted just to tell our players to repeatedly shoot from range I think for now at least we'll keep things sensible but yeah we are bossing possession 62% of it which is a lot higher than what our average has been this season traditionally We've not been that great at keeping the ball, so Neem probably looking to sit a little bit deeper, try and catch us on the break. Naturally, given the way that we play, we can be susceptible on the break, although because we play so slow and methodical in our attack, you know, we're a lower uh, tempo team, we like to drop deep, we like to kind of work the ball up as a team. You might notice I've actually added the instruction work ball into the box, which is an instruction that honestly in the last few football managers... I'd never use. I didn't like it. I didn't think it worked that well. This year, it's kind of been working for us because I think there was a stat at one point where we had 35 shots outside the area after kind of 10 games of the season. We'd scored one goal from outside the area. So I added in that instruction and the goals, they've been coming in. You know, we've been working the ball into the box more. We've been having less of those speculative efforts and it has worked for us. So having been someone who was massively against it in past football managers, this year at least... It seems to be working for me. Of course, everyone has their own preferences with instructions. Oh my gosh, maybe maybe we shouldn't work the ball into the box because Bozak has just shown us there. Long shots are possible. Neem equalising this game. It's their first shot on target in the game. Granted, we can't really complain about that. We've only had the one shot. But the ball here just knocked around the edge. Bozak picks it up. One touch, two touch. Depres lays it back to him. Bang. Where did that come from? An absolute pile driver unleashed there. And, uh, well, 30 minutes gone. It's not ideal, is it? The stats are really close in this game, shooting-wise. You know, no one's really been a stand-up performer. It's been a game of few chances. We've edged possession without doing a whole lot with it. Actas on a 6.3 rating. That is uncharacteristically low for him. And, well, actually, to end the half, Neem with a better side. What is happening in terms of analysis here? So, we are playing, obviously, our asymmetric 4-2-3-1. They're playing a 4-3-3, it seems like, and they're getting the better of us. And that is not great. Not great at all. We're playing... I mean, how do I how do I want to play this here? Obviously, this is our system. They're kind of playing this 4-3-3 with a diamond. Is there a way that we can exploit space here? I don't know. I don't know, I think for now at least we're going to stick with what we've got. We're kind of matching up interestingly in the midfield. I want to tell the players I, I expect a much better performance. Let's get them fired up. Had a bit of a think about it. I mean, the teams are kind of cancelling each other out. It's been very even. They had a few long shots towards the end of the game, or the end of the half. I could tell they were long shots, obviously, by the action thing for the last five minutes. But, well, let's see what we can do here. We've had a bit of a shout at the team, and while well, Trincao trying to make an immediate impact, that is, that's not the cross we needed. For that immediate impact to happen. Unfortunately, yeah, really poor by him. Maybe, you know, as this game progresses, we'll look to bring on a few of the more experienced players. 
of course, the benefit with playing all the younger players to start with is there is a plethora of options on the bench for us to really mix things up. And well, I know I know it's not plethora, it's plethora. I had someone comment on the, the funny story here. So I've been saying plethora my entire life. Someone commented saying, why do you say plethora wrong? It's plethora. Pl um, I can't even say it the correct way. But I was like, nah, nah, this person's wrong. No one's ever mentioned this before in the tens of times I've said it in videos. Turns out I've been saying the word wrong my entire life. And well, Adriat Seema to Trincao, Actas, edge of the box. Quintongo, finish that, hits the woodwork, rebound. Adriat Seema finds the back of the net. I think Quintongo will be given the assist. And I thought the chance had gone when we hit the woodwork there. But the rebound by Adriat Seema was well taken in the end. Quintongo probably should hit the target with this initial effort. A lovely ball from Actas. Quintongo using that space first time. A little bit of unfort misfortune. The keeper perhaps should do better, but he is carrying that injury. Maybe that played into it a little. Maybe that did, because he, he was a little bit slow to get up. Look at the average range. Part of me wants to take off Actas. Part of me feels like he contributed so much to that last goal that we should keep him on. As we do have a penalty, and Trincao has gone down like he's been shot then. We do have a penalty here. It's going to be Adriat Sima to take it. The player who has asked for a transfer. He's got one goal already in this game. Can he double his tally for the match and, well, take himself to six goals for the season? Maybe he won't want to leave the club if he keeps playing as well as he has been. Can he find the back of the net here? Penalty. I mean, sell him. Transfer list him. Offer him out for nothing. He's missed a penalty and it remains 2-1 here. And, well, if the keeper's injury was plaguing him for the second goal, it wasn't plaguing him for the penalty. But Senhaji... I mean, Tanaji has he's worked magic. It's his first ever senior goal, a player who's been at the club for five years. From the age of 16, he has been playing youth football here. And, well, we promoted him from the reserve team. It's only his third ever game. And he finds a goal. And, well, fair play to you, lad. You know, you look across our back four, Pendon, Ruiz, Senhaj, Fuchs, and Prevo. In fact, I think the entire back five are all players who started their careers at Socho. And they're all under the age of 21. That is so cool. You don't get often in football manager. Certainly, I don't. I like to bring in players from abroad. But to have this homegrown core of players who just understand each other, who have got the club philosophy ingrained into them, you know, they've got that level of understanding from playing in the reserves together and obviously all being, you know, French. And it's just kind of working for us. 3 1 up here. And we're on the attack again. This is why we are challenging at the top of the table right now, Actas. To Fuchs, who whips it in, and Andriat Seema tucks it away. What a finish that was. It is an offside, I don't think. And, uh, well, that's a brace for him. Did I miscount? I swear he got a hat-trick. No, he missed the penalty. Of course he did. I've, how did I forget that? But, yeah, really nice play. Actas again involved in the play. I really wish football considered secondary assists more of a thing. If you don't know in ice hockey, if you're the player who passes it to the player who assists, you get what's called, like, a secondary assist. And I feel like Actas is the kind of player who doesn't always get a load of assists, but he always gets these secondary assists. You can see him here again pulling the strings. He puts in one ball, and, well, that would have been a fantastic move to finish things off. I didn't really comment on it when we were looking through the recap of results, but we've been playing some really nice football and scoring some really nice goals. And we almost had another one there. But anyway, there is a chance here for us to deal with. Senhaji deals with it up to Quintongo. Of course, new kid on the block with some pace. He doesn't use the pace there. He decides just to hold up the play. And Adriat Seema up on his lonesome. Back to Pana. There is lots of space here. Trincao with yards of space to well, explore. And Adriat Seema in the box, headed away. Only as far as Ristol. And while Quintongo here, can he pull it into the box? He does. The keeper has dealt with it just about. You, you felt like something more might come of that, the way that that was developing, but no. Ten minutes left. Let's make some changes here. Let's make sure we don't carry in any injuries. Um, Pana is struggling a little bit, as is Actas. We'll bring in Costa, I think, there. Of course, Costa is the Portuguese player I signed at the start of the season who... He hasn't actually played a game. This is going to be his first ever competitive game for Socho, which is... A little bit of a kind of my bad moment, I guess, in the sense that we actually decided to bring him in because, obviously, we've not been playing him because he's not really been good enough. At the same time, I think, like, the fact that we're doing as well as we are despite not playing a player that we bought in uh, for a, a little chunk of money is kind of testament to how well we've been playing. We've been superb in this game, and this has very much been how we've been playing at the top of the table. Berengua to Ruiz, who misses it, and we've got a penalty. I mean, Adriat Seema... Is he going to get his redemption? I can't even remember. Is he? Who's who's going to take the penalty here? Is it going to be Andrew at Seema? It is. Right, the redemption moment. Can he get the hat-trick? Can he make it five for the game? 
it should really be six if he finishes this one, for the hat-trick to take him off the transfer list. I thought he'd missed it again. He scored. It's 5-1 here. Fair play. Superb for us. It's his eighth goal of the season. Maybe I should be playing him a little bit more. Of course, Rob A um, has been out of injuries, as I mentioned, for the last few game weeks, which has seen Adriat Seema come back into contention. He's played pretty pretty good today. I, I'll hold my hands up and say may, maybe we should give him more of a chance as Prevo will punch it away to safety. That is going to be all she wrote. Neem absolutely destroyed today. That is why we're top of the league. Momentum is with us. Adriat seen uh, with a second half uh, hat-trick. It could have been more. It should have been more. Fuchs had a, a fairly decent game. Great win for us. And uh, well, that's going to see us, I think, go top of the table. You can see Avra drew. Who did they draw against? They drew against Ajaxiao. Uh, and, well, they are bottom of the league, so that is a great result as far as we're concerned. Uh, in terms of when we'll be back next time, you can tell we're already, you know, midway through November. We are kind of getting right into this first season. That is eight games unbeaten in the league. You'd have to say, we've only we've only kept two clean sheets in those eight games. The goal scoring has really been what we've been relying on. But in terms of when we'll be back... I mean, we're in a title fight right now, I feel like, and I probably should be taking it a bit more seriously. We've got Lorion to play. We've got Lons, who are in third. That's not until the middle of January. We might do the game against Lorion. That could be a good game, of course. They are a decent side, relegated only last year. If we just look at their, their general information, they were predicted to win the league. They're a team who I imagine are going to be trying to find some form. They're down in mid-table. They have got a game in hand. You can see their form has actually been really good as of late. So that will be a good game to do, I think. Hopefully I will see you guys for that one. Um, just a reminder that the youth series will be starting once we hit January. And that will be a series in which we do parallel to this one. Where I talk about all the youth academies. Of course, I am going to delve a little bit into it. You know, when I'm talking about players who might come into the first team like Lasmi. But um, yeah, for the most part, that is going to be exclusively talked about in the side series. And well, when you look at this reserve team... There's lots of players to talk about. And I, I do want to go into detail a little bit with training and such in that too. But anyway, guys, that is going to be all from me. We are playing fantastically right now. Hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, the young kids can keep it going until then. It is me, Jack. In, like, leave a like if you enjoyed. And other than that, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.